Welcome back. India is today celebrating its maiden National Space Day. It was on this very day last year that we became the first country ever to land on the moon's southern polar region and only the fourth to land on the moon. Now, the day is also meant to highlight the significant role of the Indian Space Research Organization, that is also ISRO, in the field of science and technology, the success so far and the challenges and goals ahead. And to tell us all about this is a man himself, Deepak Bopana, my colleague, uh, spoke to the chairman of the ISRO. Listen in. A warm welcome to all our viewers. As India celebrates its first ever National Space Day, this day probably was not going to be possible if history was not created exactly about a year ago. 23rd August 2023. That's when India created history. ISRO created history by landing on the surface of the moon. Joining me today is uh, Dr. S. Somnath, the uh, chairman of ISRO. Sir, you, of course, been the brain behind Chandrayaan-3 and of course the success of various other space programs in the country and more importantly you put India on the global space map today. Firstly I'd like to thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much. And as India celebrates uh, you know National Space Day you know what do you think is the importance of the day? Landing on the moon has been an enigma for many for you know, starting from the space age the the fierce competition that uh, erupted early 60s to reach moon and then land human on the moon. Now that story is well behind us. Uh, and uh, over a period of time, the interest on the moon came down uh, across nations. But then the, there is a new interest in going to moon. Every nation is trying to make it a point to reach moon. And that's why you have been seeing many missions happening in the recent times. The Russians, the Americans, the Japanese, the Chinese, all of them were going, sending moon, not human beings. They are robotic missions. So uh, in that context, the mission of India going to moon in the renewed interest of going to moon becomes significant. And for us, the significance came because that we were the first to land on the southern side of the moon, which is considered to be more scientifically of greater interest. So, and we were the first to do that. And we were the fourth to be on the moon on a robotic lander. So, and also it came to a, on a time then, then we were landing. There were other missions all trying to go along with us to go to moon and land. And many of them uh, were struggling. So in that context, uh, leaving behind our experience of 2019, not able to land softly, the event on 23rd August 2023 became an historic event for all of us. And you said the significance in many sectors, the importance and significance of this will be felt. The first and foremost in the minds of young people, students, researchers, and for them uh, it's a confidence giver on the might of India to develop such a capability, do it on our own uh, uh, will, uh, do it from India based on technologies that were developed in India. Second, it gives uh, every Indian a pride of being an Indian uh, craft reaching the moon and putting our flag on that, Absolutely. that gives you a second, you know, a pride. Looking at the scientific goals and accomplishment in that, it has been historical that the Chandrayaan 1 was the, the craft that identified water, presence of water on the moon, even after so many years of exploration of the moon. And it was the, the one, the remote sensing instrument on the Chandrayaan 1, an American instrument as well as an Indian, Indian instrument found out the traces of water, later corroborated by further findings. Now Chandrayaan 3, uh, is going to do that. But even Chandrayaan 2, you know, the OHRC camera was one of the highest resolution images ever produced on the moon, which was used by other agencies now. And, and the, the orbiter was functional for such a long time. Such a long time, yes. And Chandrayaan 3, of course, found out some, many of the scientific findings. Yesterday, one of the important findings came. I was in the just nature. going to come to that yeah, because nature. it's been a year. I'm sure, you know, yeah. uh, all this while we've been talking about just the landing. But after the landing, a host of experiments have been conducted by ISRO. Yeah. Take us to this latest finding and how interesting is it? Now, there are many in the pipe uh, pipeline to come out in the reputed journals and newspapers. Yesterday's finding on uh, the, uh, the lunar surface evaluation by the um, if the, the spectral, uh, me, spectral characterization of the materials on the okay. surface gave a different finding and, and it talked about the, the origin of the moon, it where from the material on the surface came and uh, that linking is, has been very very significant. It's a new finding because it's when you... It's called the ocean of magma if I'm not mistaken, is it something like that or what, what does it exactly signify for viewers of course who probably do not understand scientifically what does it mean? Magma refers to more of a volcanic nature okay. or the molten material nature of the surface or the, uh, the creation of the materials on the surface. So as we see, you see the moon today as a dead material, mm. not having any 
you know, molten core, unlike the Earth. Earth, you know, the surface of Earth is crust is so thin. Yeah. Most of it is molten and it is moving inside in the molten. Whereas the moon is considered to be more of a cool down as a solid material, but still having certain activity taking place. But this suggests, the evaluation suggests that this material could have been ejected out of a uh, such a process where once it was molten and then over a period of time it cooled down to create this. Instead of assuming that uh, no, the nature of creation was from a aggregation of materials that moon got created. So India is the first country to get this sort of got, idea. got sort of a, such an idea because we were able to do measurements at multiple locations. Okay. Possibly this was never done before. That's very interesting. And uh, you know, talking about Chandrayaan 3, we should also talk about the future of Chandrayaan as well. Uh, I've just, um, you know, been informed that 4 and 5, Chandrayaan 4 and 5, the design is almost ready. So what's the plan for 4 and 5? Foremost is, you must continue to go to moon. See, the one mission that we did on landing is only the beginning. And we need to learn how to bring back that craft back to Earth. We did something in Chandrayaan 3, just lifting off, bringing back the orbiter back to Earth orbit. Some of the initial studies were done. But going there, landing, then taking off using a propulsive assist device, and then come back to Earth, re return to Earth, and then collect the sample. It's next order of things. So this is first step. But this will be done in a scaled version. That's what we call Chandrayaan 4. Okay, so okay. so the plan, of course, will be going there now, conducting more experiments and probably trying to bring back. Bring back, yeah. It's actually, you know, proving the technology of coming back is the primary objective. Of course, while we come back, why not collect some samples and come? Absolutely. Okay, so that's the first part of it. But then your question of taking human to moon and landing is now targeted uh, by 2040. 2040. 40. Okay. It's, a lo it's a pretty long time in yeah. the scale of uh, the work that we need to do, but it's not that much of time really we have to understand yeah. because we have so much of capability yet to be developed. The first and foremost, the human spaceflight capability on Gaganyan is yet to happen. So we have to first send the human to space, bring them back safely, take them again and again, bring a sp build up a space station, then send human beings for experiments for long duration stay, develop a higher capacity rocket to take human beings up to moon because the current rockets are not capable of doing it. It's just hardly four tons. If you have to send human beings to moon, you need to lift 100 tons. Yeah. So we need to develop rockets of that caliber. We need to develop a space station to operate on a continuous basis. We need to create a ground infrastructure to operate such, uh, such uh, infrastructure over long periods of time. So the capacity development has to happen in a in calibrated manner over a period of time. But this the vision is, is there. Of course the vision is there, but we need to work on it, uh, invest on it for a long period of time. Absolutely, and I'm sure with uh, you know people who have the vision like you do, and to take it forward, um, uh, that day is not far away, and probably a deadline that you set, we could even see it happening much earlier. We must, we must target. 2040 is definitely a, a date within uh, the hundredth year of our independence. That's why we said 2040. So we, I am hopeful that we will be able to do that. So you know, talking about uh, man on the moon, but before, like you said, Gaganyaan is the next plan. So where is that, the, if you could give us the latest update on Gaganyaan at this point in time, we believe very soon there's going to be an unmanned spacecraft that's going to go and do a trial run of sorts, which the manned aircraft is going to do. Tell us about the timeline and where the stage right now is. See, uh, of course, uh, in the Gaganyaan program, we have been a little slow in the, in the past. I must admit that uh, the technology development program was going on. The first of the four thrust was on the rocket side, because rocket need to be much more reliable. We call it human rating. So a lot of tests happened on the stages uh, of the LVM-3 uh, to convert it to human rated. And the entire process is now completed. The rocket in the final stage of flight has now been realized and brought to Sri Arikota launch complex. So it is there now. Now second uh, element is the crew module where the crew has to enter. But this development is getting taking time because the technology to make such a CRA place uh, in piece of engineering to do it in India is not there. So this is completely being done indigenously? We, origin is... we originally thought that we can do it outside okay. and we tried in many ways to get it done outside where there is some experience of doing it yeah. but nothing materialized due to many reasons, technological, contractual, cost and many other things prevented from doing such a thing. Finally we had decided to do it here using the homegrown knowledge and technology which has taken a little longer time. It, it becomes indigenous and we are going to get it from industry now. Then uh, that part is one. Second is there is something complex elements in it, which is called the crew module, electronics crew module, propulsion and service module, environmental control and life support system. They are under different levels of development. In the first flight, of course, human being is not going to go, so everything is not needed. 
especially the oxygen supply, water supply, food supply is not needed. Yeah. And uh, waste management is not needed. So we are going to put a robot. So that robot is under development and it has now reached the flight. What will this robot be capable of doing? Sir? It can interact with us or with the audio manner. Mm -hmm. It can also do some functions like keys and switches and controls and replacement of some valves, opening some valves, things like that, which is needed for experiment. But more importantly, it will measure, suppose a human is inside, what type of environment that will feel, temperature, pressure, uh, the vibration, shock, everything it will measure. So that will give an idea about a person actually going, how he will feel it, about it. So it will be fully instrumented. Then uh, there are other items called crew escape system. You would have seen that we had uh, yes. done a launch of that uh, part and we proved that it is already there, but that's only one mission. So we, are, we have to do one more before we actually do the unmanned mission. So that's also getting ready. So the flight item is almost re realized now. And lastly, there is another critical item called uh, the uh, integrated vehicle health management system, which actually is a computer of complex nature, which will monitor the rocket while it flies and checks whether everything is in order, whether all parameters are correct. Is there any failure going to happen? Not after failure, it will say it, is it has failed, but prior to failure, it must look at the entire health of it and say that yeah, there is an imminent danger. And if that danger is seen, you are about save the crew. So this has to happen in less than few milliseconds of time. So that is also developed. The flight item is undergoing simulation and test. So all of this will come together at Srigarikota in another few months of time. And we are hoping that by December we should be able to integrate everything.